Hello YouTube, this is Doofiend. I am uh, going to go over a couple things real quick here, just as an update. Uh, this video has gone viral. That's not what I want to talk about today, but thanks guys. Um, it's really been getting a lot of hits for what my video is, what my normal videos are anyway. Uh, the cold start with the uh, me starting the aircraft along with this uh, uh, 1943 training video. It's been very cool to see that, uh, but uh, one of the things I've been busy doing is uh, I have been developing a module for DCS. I've started on August 1st of this year, and now it is August 18th. This is not what I have been producing. This is a free 3D model that shows the model of aircraft that I'm building. This is the T6 Texan. I will be building it in the guise of an SNJ-4. Uh, which is the Navy version of a certain type and development. Uh, this is a free model I got from Sketchfab. I will not be using much or any of this if I can possibly help it. Um, I might be able to reuse some bits, but it is not accurate enough for DCS. Uh, what I have got so far is uh, I have gone and redone the engine completely, the entire engine bay, modeled kind of low poly behind the engine because it's going to be covered. Um, I've started on the center wing section here. This is the bulkheads around where the landing gear fit. Uh, this will be, this empty space is where the fuel tanks fit. Um, these are the space holders for the fuel filler caps. Uh, much of that 3D model is wrong, uh, at least, you know, in terms of modeling for DCS. So I am going through and uh, using original drawings and documents and as much ever I can find, uh, mostly a photographic record, and I am reconstructing the entire plane piece by piece. This is what I've got so far in 18 days. All of this is stuff I've created with the exception of the cooling fins on the cylinders. I was able to reuse from that free 3D model. Uh, just be upfront and forward about that. Uh, but what's going on here is, let's see, I've got these pictures from this this Smithsonian. This is their T6. Actually, no, I believe it's an SNJ. Actually, uh, is in their storage. There's plenty of of great details here. There's a 30 caliber mount there on the right hand side. That's uh, where I'm going to mount a 30 caliber. There's also another 30 caliber in the right wing in this guise. Uh, it was capable of mounting two up here and then one in each wing, but uh, in the SNJ-4 it was, uh, and just in the training version for gunnery training, it just had the one and the one in the wing, the left wing mount, housed a gun camera. Um, as you can see from this, there is a forward cockpit and a rear cockpit. This is meant as a trainer. Uh, the student would sit up front and fly the aircraft. Uh, there was even an infamous hood that uh, they would use for instrument training. I don't know if I'll model that or not. Uh, the instructor would sit in the back. Uh, I had a fully functional cockpit uh, in the back. Uh, other versions of this had the uh, pilot as a combat pilot in the front seat and then a gunner in the rear. This assembly would fold back over, um, not in this guise. This was a, a permanent installation, but in other, uh, another way of doing it uh, it was attached to this sliding bit of canopy and had a 30 caliber mount that was quite flexible. Uh, in the rear. I would like to be able to model that. Um, I would like this to be a trainer. I would like this to be an aerobatic aircraft for DCS. Uh, I want to uh, be able to do carrier landings and take off, take off or take offs. Uh, it was equipped with a arrestor hook uh, in the SNJ4C uh, versions. Uh, they would fly these off of carriers and use it for carrier qualification and, and uh, training. Um, 
this aircraft uh, in this SNJ-4 guys had bomb racks that could carry four 100-pound bombs. I would like to put those and implement those in as well as the guns. And uh, I think it would be great aircraft. This is a, uh, a Pratt & Whitney uh, R1340 engine that produced about 600 horsepower. That gave it a maximum speed of just over 200 miles an hour, which is slow in terms of warbirds, but we were rather uh, spoiled for warbirds here because of, uh, you know, the apex predators that like the, uh, the BF-109 uh, Kerfurst and the FW-190 Dora. Very late war designs, uh, sporting well over uh, 2,000 horsepower each. Uh, this would not compete with those in the slightest. The only people in uh, that used these in combat uh, were a number of British provincials. Uh, and it's kind of all they had, uh, particularly early in the war, uh, to fight off uh, Japanese Zeros. Um, there were a few that were able to get kills, but largely this was outclassed. Uh, by many other early war designs, it was a primarily a trainer. Uh, part of the school of thought was you get out of the uh, the Stearman biplane, and before they put you in the seat of a a uh, high end fighter like a Mustang or a P thirty eight, or you know a Hawker Hurricane or a Spitfire, uh, you did your qualifications in this. Uh, many pilots grew to love this plane. Uh, even though their much faster, uh, newer rides were, were, you know, faster and higher performing, the flight model on this, uh, you know, really earned a lot of, uh, I know, admiration from its former pilots that have graduated on into, you know, faster airplanes. Um, I think that DCS could really use this particular bird. And so, you know, even though it's not a high-end fighter, I think that it would lend itself greatly to the experience in Digital Combat Simulator. Uh, anyway, this is what I've been up to uh, for the past 18 days. I am going to teach myself anything that I need to be taught. I am going to do the modeling. I'm going to do the programming. I'm going to have a high accuracy, high fidelity cockpit. And uh, yeah, so far it's just me uh, on this project. I would like to be able to think that I could bring this to a mod status, uh, maybe even uh, bring it on into a professional module is my hope. Uh, I know that the standards for a third-party developer status on a on a DCS proper module is got some very high standards and I hope to be able to achieve them. Anyway, this is Doofiend signing off. I will get back to work on this module and uh, I will see you in a future video.